Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second international conference on entropy and its applications. First of all, I take this opportunity to thank the organizers and the chair of the forum, Professor Don Holtz, to give me this opportunity to share my latest research with you. Then, I like to remember this sentence. Le seul véritable voyage, c'est ce n'est pas dans l'inverse de mon paysage, mais d'avoir un plaisir. That uh, means uh, uh, the real research voyage is not to discover new territories, new countries, but to have new highs. This is the first one. And the second one is observer, c'est pour la toute la part. Imaginer ce qu'on s'appelle à voir. And it means uh, uh, to observe for the major part is just to imagine what you are expecting to see. And this is something that we have to uh, reflect on, on it. In fact, uh, uh, I like to underline that this is my second uh, participation to this international conference that is becoming the preferred forum for advanced focused research on entropy and information conservation. Um, last year, I proposed a computational solution to the entropy conundrum uh, by my paper titled The Entropy Conundrum, a Solution Proposal that is working pretty well right now. This year, I focused the problem of entropy production and information conservation for the space-time splitting due to the inertial observer by my paper titled Entropy, Decoherence and Space-Time Splitting. Um, as a matter of fact, the classical instrumentation noise discrimination problem is still faced by the single domain channel transfer function concept, channel noise in China starting from classic channels information in theory concept and then applying traditional perturbation computational model under either additive or multiplicative perturbation hypothesis. In general, HX, called channel entropy, is the average unpredictability in a random variable which is equivalent to its information content. The concept was introduced by Claude Shannon in his 1948 paper, The Mathematical Theory of Communication, well known. Channel's entropy provides an absolute limit on the best possible loss that can include the compression of any communication, assuming that the communication may be represented as a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables. And this is a, a strong assumption because it's something that is far away from the usual uh, information uh, properties that we are accustomed to. And in fact, I just like to show a, a first example of this. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, just a simple question. You see two images, and then uh, just a simple question. Which one of them is more random? Are you able to guess by your eyes only? Well, uh, if you cannot, then you ask for a little help from Shannon entropy. And so we compute Shannon entropy for each one of them in a single precision, double precision, and multiple precision, just to be sure that uh, the digits don't trick us. And so now you see that uh, according to the Shannon theory, uh, the, uh, the more uh, random in, in images, the uh, higher the value of you find. In this case, the highest value that you will get are the, the ones for the, the image uh, in the bottom. And so, for sure, now we can say that this is the random image according to Shannon Entry. Uh, this is a simple example, just we can go to a more sophisticated one that we call image example. Same question, which one of them is more random? Again, 
we have computed channel entropy, but as you see that again, the bottom image gets highest, higher value than the, the, the upper one. So, we are again convinced that uh, this one is more random than the other one. But now, we check with the compression test. And then, let's try to compress both of them. And the final result is this one. So, you see, we were able to compress this image about uh, 314 times and no compression for the upper one. So, the true random image is the upper one. And so, the same in the previous uh, example. So, you see that uh, by channel entropy, we got wrong result. And that's the major problem for our instrumentation because uh, uh, our instrumentations are just based on this kind of approach. We have to develop much stronger uh, tools to be able to discriminate them. And that's uh, uh, something that I just introduced you. If you want to know more, then you can go to Amazon and just download this ebook, Creativity Mind, where you will get a lot of uh, information on these kind of problems and uh, a lot more. But uh, why these kind of topics are so important? Because, uh, uh, as you know, uh, taking into consideration the observer into your modeling problem is an approach supported by a paradigm change, the one forwarded by quantum mechanics and specifically by quantum field theory. Why this problem is so important? For numerous theoretical reasons, and, but even many practical ones. For instance, it is well known that to model the neural activity, activity inside the brain, uh, brain modeling, multi scale model approach, both the time domain and frequency domain based on numerical computational methods, uh, you can use uh, any, any, any one you like, for solving the best relevant equation, suffer from the so called no frequency breakdown problem. It is not uncommon, therefore, to resolve to uh, quasi static solver, uh, solvers. And unfortunately, however, this approximation is not valid for most of the materials I have. In fact, the quasi static potential differs from the full wave potential by nearly 30 to 50 percent. What does it mean? It means that uh, you are modeling. Solutions are not reliable at all. The success of neuroscience in the study of the structural and uh, bio uh, biochemical properties of neurons, uh, glial cells, and all the biological units and cellular structures in the brain have not yet filled the gap between the behavior understood at cellular level, microscale, and the macroscopic dynamics involved in the traffic between the brain and the world around, around it. This is mainly due to the fact that traditionally we use an electromagnetic model equation for granted, uh, taking into consideration no observer interaction for the uh, representation problem, for the equation representation problem. In previous paper, we already discussed the better intrinsic limitations of size 1.0, arbitrary multi scale AMS modeling. Strategies to get better simulation result by science 2.0 approach. And uh, uh, the science 2.0 uh, paradigm has not yet been completely grasped by many contemporary scientific disciplines and current, and current researchers. So that not only the implications of this big change have been realized either, and even less they related to practical applications. Thus, one of the key question in understanding the quantum classical transition, what happens to the superposition as you go up to the atoms to epoch scale, is this one. Exactly. When and how does both end become either or? This is the real question. And in the paper of this year, I try to give a sound answer to it. 
And so, as an example, we present and discuss the observed space time split to case. In other words, we show space time mapping to classical systematic representation with entropy generation. And uh, at exactly at this point that the both N becomes either of representation by usual size 1.0 approach. And so we use the CICT new awareness of discrete hyperbolic geometry subspace, reciprocal space, of coded heterogeneous hyperbolic structures underlying the familiar Q, a, a Euclidean direct space, the surface representation, to open the way to holographic information geometry, to recover system log coherence and to overall system minimum entropy representation. These brain waves uh, then uh, can be mapped uh, in a stronger and more reliable way, and then we are able to recover even log information. Uh, I'll just show you a little example. You can apply this approach to uh, many different areas, uh, and uh, specifically, uh, helpful uh, will be helpful for experimental observation for uh, getting more reliable data uh, from your experimentation, and then even uh, uh, to develop more uh, uh, reliable and resilient uh, um, learning algorithms. And, uh, and the final point is that uh, you can use this kind of approach for a cybernetics update for competitive deep learning system development. And uh, it's a work in progress. Many things to develop all together. And uh, sometimes when you have too many things to follow, then you reach a state of mindfulness and then, have, and then you have to remember to avoid neuralizing your brain. Thank you for your attention.